Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. We've given you our best. Now it's time for the worst matches of 2022, according to Wrestle Talk's perfect nomination process. I am Luke Owen, D-A-D. I'm joined by Chopper Pete Quinnell. I'm joined by Tempest, the people who hate wrestling the most, of course, to talk about the worst matches of the year. Uh, we had our best matches, mm. which was won by... Oh, actually, we shouldn't say spoilers. Yeah, no, no spoilers. There's a yeah. link for it in the video description down below. We've also gotten through our best pay-per-views mm. of the year. We'll have our worst pay-per-views coming out in the next video. Uh, so... Let's go through the worst matches mm. of the year. Just to, to clarify as well, yes, Luke, how does this system work? Well, how do people get in their nominations? I, I'm glad you asked, Pete. Mm. I was about to get into that. Good. So our nomination system works as such. But also, by the way, if this is your first time here, please do press the subscribe button. Give us a little thumbs up and everything. Leave a comment down below. Tell us what your worst match of the year was. Because maybe next year, we'll open up the nominations further. The way it works is that we as hosts all submit our nominations. We submit our five worst matches of the year. The worst match will get five points. The second will get four. Third will get three and so on. Not only is it us, our editors also get their nominations in, our website writers get them in, our $100 backers get in their nominations, and wrestling influencers put in their nominations. I total up, I total up all of the scores, and I've got the results here. This is categorically, scientifically, the worst match of the year. It's just science. Well, and now it's not opinion, it's counting. Mm, exactly. Now, it was an interesting year, 2022, because we mm. had discussions in the office, and I think we've mentioned this on a previous one of our Best of Awards uh, videos, that we, we've had discussions that it was kind of hard to come up with five matches. There's been a lot of very good wrestling this year, but mm. it's I think because we haven't had Vince for a whole year, we, and we're not in the Thunderdome era anymore, there's no, like, wacky nonsense. There's, mm -hmm. like, there's no Bray versus Randy. There's no mm. zombies. There's no zombies. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, really obvious, yeah. oh, that's objectively the worst match of yeah. the year. You have, like, on TV occasionally, you'd have, like, well, that was a bit of a bad finish kind of thing. But it's never as bad to be like, well, that was the worst match of the year. Yeah, like, even, like, Damien Priest winning by a purple light. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. But it's not, like, the worst match no, of the exactly. year. No, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it, that's normally reserved for stuff that's, like, more important, like pay-per-view matches and things like that. Because when stuff is bad on pay-per-view, it's much worse than yeah. a bad TV match. So at the very least, we can give credit to 2022 because I would much rather it be a difficult year for us to vote upon what is the worst match of the year than the other way around. Absolutely. If we were yeah. struggling to come up with 10 best matches of the year, that would be a real shame, but mm -hmm. that was not the case this year. If, if anything, actually, the hardest part of the best list was just whittling it down to five. Because mm -hmm. I, I yeah. had a short list of 10. Yeah. And it was then like, ugh. I mean, I really want to get this match in. Like, I really wanted to have Hater versus Storm in my top five, mm. but I just couldn't justify it above some of my mm -hmm. other nominations. I think with the worst match, it was... Not easier, but there was like, well, there's, there's five right there. Yeah. I can go with those five. You yeah. lengthen your list out to get to five <laughs> instead yeah. of trimming it down from mm -hmm. ten. And, exactly. I, and I do like to lengthen things. So uh, let's get into the results itself, starting with the five that did not make mm. the top ten. So in at number 15 with eight points, which actually was tied with a couple of others, but this did get one top level nomination. And I was kind of surprised by this, in a way, but also in a way not. CM Punk versus John Moxley from Dynamite, the mm, squash mm. match. Okay, yeah, I can understand why people wouldn't like that. Yep. Yeah. Number fourteen with nine points. Uh, in fact, actually, <laughs> this is hilarious. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen all got nine points. Oh, so okay. all tied with nine. Yep. Tidy. Uh, Drew McIntyre versus Karrion Cross from Extreme Rules. Sure. Just not very good. It was all right. Yeah, it yeah. was fine. Amos versus Braun Strowman from Crown Jewel. <laughs> I <laughs> thought that would do better mm -hmm. in or a way. Or worse. Or worse, yeah. 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 Eddie Kingston versus Chris Jericho from Fighter Fest Week 2. The I barbed thought wire. you were going to say from Revolution. <laughs> I was like, what are people talking about? <laughs> uh, no, from uh, the Barbed Wire Everywhere match. In fact, mm. that actually got one top level nom. Mm. Uh, in Interesting. That, so, yeah, people, someone really didn't like that match. And... Austin Theory versus Seth Rollins. They've made, failed Money in the Bank cash in. Yeah, nearly, also fair. Nearly made it into the top 10. I actually thought it was going to as well. They got four nominations mm. from, you know, I mean, granted, it's 34, you know, in total, but there was enough early votes for it. I thought it was going to make it into the top 10, which brings us to our top 10 mm. in joint ninth. Oh, okay. It is 
with 11 points. Jade Cargill versus Marina Shafir from AEW Dynamite on November 2nd, tied with Ronda Rousey versus Liv Morgan from WWE Extreme Rules. Yeah. Interesting. The yeah. Marina Shafir match, I, I know she got a lot of flack online mm. this year, and not just for her hat. Um, <laughs> or, Only or, one AEW star is allowed to like their hat. Yeah, exactly. Not just for her hat or that promo that she did on Dark Elevation or something. It's like, you know, the sort of promo that, I mean, like 10 people were probably going to see, but then social media like makes it seem like, you know, then tens yeah. of thousands of people see it. But this match in particular, I do remember people being like really, really quite against it. Yeah. I think Ollie was probably more against the the ROH Women's Championship match, the Deanna Perrazzo, um uh, uh, uh Mercedes, Mercedes Martinez. Martinez. Yeah, he was more against that one, and that did actually do quite well in the nominations. It didn't make it into the top ten though. So I, I was I was surprised this got more nominations than it did. One top level nomination, in fact. Mm. Uh, re someone really did not like this match. I thought it was. All right, but it, eh. it's not the worst match. No, I've I, ever I seen. wouldn't. I wouldn't have ranked it because I. I think I forgot it happened. <laughs> so like, I, yeah. yeah, like there's, it's, it's there's not been that, a it's number. There's been me. a number of them so far, even where it's just like, oh yeah, I remember that was a bit, a bit crap, you yeah. know. But again, this list is not, at least to this point, populated with like the Damian Priest uh, zombie match, or exactly, you know, the Fiend and Randy Orton at WrestleMania, mm -hmm. or. Alexa Bliss doing crazy mind control on Nia Jax and yeah. things like that. Like the really atrocious, offensive mm -hmm. kind of matches. It's just like, yeah. oh yeah, that was a bit bad. But I think a lot of the time, especially at this point in the year where AEW is still pretty doing pretty well for themselves before double or nothing and everything. But like, yeah, you just kind of like these matches would happen and be like, all right, that was a lame one. Forget about it. Move on. Yeah. There's other good things to focus on. I kind of mm. agree with what Pete said earlier. It's like TV matches, I tend not to put into my worst five mm. anyway because they're TV matches. They have to be yeah. especially bad for me to remember Absolutely. them as such. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. However, like Ronda Rousey versus Liv Morgan. I mean, yeah. people did not like that feud anyway because I think that WWE, since Triple H took over, did a massive drop of the ball with mm. poor Liv Morgan. Yeah. And the Rousey feud did nothing for her because the Rousey feud essentially was her telling Liv Morgan you're not on my level then them having matches that proved that Liv Morgan was not on her level yeah they, they really really tried to protect Ronda Rousey in this feud to the detriment of Liv Morgan uh and yeah this match like I don't think a lot of people necessarily expected Ronda to win I thought the, like the point of the story was Liv going to be like no actually I am on your level and she was gonna win and yay that's nice particularly because this is a whole like no I can go to the extreme exactly mm -hmm. yeah and Ronda was like yeah but I'm not gonna sell for it so I'm yeah. still gonna tap you out and it was a bit of a weird finish with like Liv being happy and passing out and it was a weird submission that was in like a table and it wasn't her finisher and it was a bit like oh okay I guess yeah and it was like oh and Ronda's won it's not it's not great. Just kind of left you with a bad taste in your mouth afterwards. Wasn't yeah. horrendous in terms of the actual match, but the finish and the booking around it was a bit like, nee. Yeah. yeah, it comes at the end of something that people were not into That's at all. It. Yeah. And I mean, you can try and do the the pass out smile that you're 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 in pain and yay and all that. The Minoru Suzuki finish where he was having an amazing match with Kota Ibushi a few years ago and they just beat the piss out of each other for like 20 some minutes in the G1 and Ibushi knocks him out, pins him. And afterwards, like they zoom in on Suzuki and he's just smiling to himself because yeah. he's like, yeah, I had a fight. I had a great time. <laughs> yeah. That you could try to do something like that, but not everyone is Minoru Suzuki. Mm. And this was not a situation in which you should be happy to be losing this match or be happy to be in this position and yeah. smiling and everything. It just didn't click. A lot of this yeah. situation, this storyline didn't click for a lot of people, myself included. I mean, the storyline follow-up has really helped that idea. No, exactly, yeah. 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 I mean, the SmackDown women's division in general this year Ooh. has just been, you know, we not talk right. about it every single week. But mm. also, you heard it here first. Uh, Liv Morgan is not Minoru Suzuki. In case <laughs> there was any confusion... Putting it up. I oh. reckon they both do fantastic Harley Quinn cosplays. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had tied for number nine, tied for number seven, Crikey. tied seventh, both with uh, 12 points each. This is a name you might have heard. Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair from WrestleMania 38, tied with the casino ladder match from All Out. You know? Yeah. 
I really thought the ladder match would do again better slash worse. I thought higher get, on the list. Right? I thought yes. it would get more nominations because neither of these two matches got top level nominations, mm-hmm. but had like they were consistently on people's lists. I think for the for the casino ladder match to start with. I think that if they didn't have the follow-up and the reveal of MJF on the same show, this would have been right up there at the top. I think the it kind of like placated the fans a little bit to be like, okay, it was to set up a thing that we want to see. Okay, I still don't like the fact they did this with the match, but the reveal of MJF kind of softened the blow a little bit. If they'd have just done, it's this person in a mask and he's won it and the match doesn't mean anything anymore, it would have been like, well, that's rubbish. With yeah. the firm. Yeah, with the firm. In, yeah. Oh, God, And, yeah. like, because you then had Brawl out after it as well. Like, so yeah. then no one was really talking about MJF's return. Yeah. It yeah. was kind of funny. A lot of people made the, the point of, like, MJF no, nearly no showing double or nothing mm-hmm. overshadowed Wardlow's win. Yep. And then Punk's actions at the media scrum really overshadowed his return mm-hmm. and his ladder match win. I have never seen a ladder match end in more deafening silence mm. than the casino ladder match. Yeah. That was a Chicago crowd that did not know how to react to a finish. Yep. Mm-hmm. They just watched this guy come out in a mask, climb. They didn't know if it was a return, a new character, a debut. They didn't even react to like the song mm. or anything like that. They just went silent. Mm-hmm. And maybe could argue was like, oh, it was, it was hushed tones. I think it was confusion. It was. Yeah. And people did not know how to react to it. And you're right. I think because they did reveal it, granted it's like four hours later, they revealed yeah. that it was MJF. I think that does help it somewhat. But even up to the point of the finish, it wasn't like an outstanding ladder match anyway. It was just a bunch of spots, bad finish. Well, that was the thing. A, a match like this, the casino ladder match, is you have staggered entrance. So once everyone is in, then it's like, okay, now we go. Now we can kind of expect the finish to come at any time. So there's an increased amount of tension. The people are going to be into it more. And you can just then have all seven or however many guys were in the match really go just hog wild and again it was like claudio was in the match you had uh andrade Andrade. was in the match Mm -hmm. it was a really good cast now this was one of the matches i was most looking forward to Mm -hmm. on the show absolutely and exactly when you expected the match to ramp up is when it ended Mm -hmm. it just pulls the rug out from everybody and therefore doesn't have a chance to get into that next gear and it was just disappointing, and yeah. I get it. Like you do the MJF thing, and you do have to sacrifice the match in order to do it that way. But it does mean that you sacrifice the match. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And then, and then by extension, you sacrifice all the other guys in that match as well. Yeah. And like no one got anything out of that match. No. no. Uh, so yeah, I can't I, even remember who else was in it. That's what I was no. just thinking. I could Andrade was the only name I could think of. I even got Claudio was in I it. I think no. I think Phoenix was in it. Yuta might have been in it. But yeah. like that sounds about right. I got I got nothing. I got else nothing. Past that. Yeah. And Flair versus Rousey at Mania. Ugh. Like, they had two matches because they had a backlash match Yeah, as they had well. the I Quit match. Yeah. And this was a match that I think was the... Ronda's not had a great 2022. No. Some may call it a bad 2022. Yeah, she's had a bad year. Yeah. Not helped by the fact she came in, won the Rumble, when oh. people didn't really want her to win the Rumble. Yeah. And the first thing she did was come out on Raw afterwards and just be like, no, I don't want to be here. Yeah. I don't need this. Like, yeah. I don't need you. I don't need this company. I don't need to win the rumble. It's like, why well, aren't you guys cheering for me? Yeah, a, a lot of that. And yeah. then she went and then she looks like, and I, I was gonna make this point in the Liv Morgan match, it looks like she doesn't want to be there. Like that promo was a problem to like shoot promo of like, mm. I don't want to be here, but I'm forced to. So because I've got a contract with this stupid company doing this stupid fake fighting. And then the, she just had a fake fighting match with Charlotte where she put in little effort. Charlotte, like Charlotte had a bad match. It doesn't really happen because Flair's amazing. But Rousey's lack of effort really hurts a lot of the matches that she had this year. And I just remember Cena being like kind of tediously bored by this. And then I by the fact that like Ronda doesn't win. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't then and then doesn't sell the fact that she didn't win either. It's like, eh, it was it was rubbish. There's yeah. so many things that I have wrong with this this match and the presentation of everything. First of all, it is basically the women's equivalent of like WrestleMania 34 Roman versus Brock, where you get the one person that is the push star that no one's going to cheer for. And then you have the heel who you're not supposed to cheer for, but people don't really like anyway. There's no one to cheer for in this match. It's not a great match to begin with. And then it just like, it has a whack ass finish Mm -hmm. where the person that you're at least expecting to win so that we can move past this nonsense and not have to see it again, 
they don't win. Mm -hmm. So that means that, oh my God, we have to sit through it again. At the next pay-per-view. At the next pay-per-view. And nobody wants it to begin with. I remember Ronda said like, oh, I think this match is going to achieve cult classic status in a few years. Like, It's not. This was a bad match. And I've been saying a few times this year, the fact that WWE sacrificed Sasha Banks for this run from Ronda Rousey this year is like one of the biggest unforced errors I've ever seen from a wrestling company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now like there's all these reports being like, they don't see her as a star anyway. So they'd much rather just put effort into other people. Like that to me reeks of, she's not going to come back. So we don't actually, we never liked her in the first Mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. We've got a Ronda. We don't need a Sasha Banks. It's, it, it feels slightly Why? petty, and I, I think it's ma- like I think Banks's appearance in the Rumble is a real indicative point of like she was going to have a bad year. Yeah, regardless if she just stayed or she left, so like that was never going to work out for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe she did the right thing. In at number six, we've got no more ties now. Mm. So in at sixth with thirteen points, five nominations, one of which was top level. The Women's Royal Rumble. Another Ronda Rousey match-ish, because she did yeah. win the thing. The, I mean, it was a bad, bad rumble. It was a bad year. show. Bad show. Both rumbles were ass. Yeah, and the women's one, while better than the men's... Sure was. Uh, was like, I think because we knew that... The, the reports had already come out that Ronda was going to be in the rumble so the kind of expectation was like well ronda's winning then so it kind of really did leave us like well we just gotta get through 29 other people mm-hmm. before we get to the the ronda point right and it wasn't the kind of royal rumble where you it like this goes for the whole show and i think that we'll probably talk about the <laughs> other one in a bit maybe, maybe maybe not it wasn't the kind of royal rumble match where you can sort of have fun during it, even knowing that the outcome is going to be what it is, because there weren't a lot of really fun moments. They had announced the Mickey James spot mm-hmm. beforehand, yeah, which they never should have done. Yep. They announced so many of the special supl- the surprise returns, yeah. and even the ones that we didn't know about, like Molina comes out and is eliminated immediately. immediately. Mm-hmm. Like, none of the cool moments that you could have had sprinkled throughout this, and this goes for the whole show, where it was so uninspired. They, there was no thought put into any of the spots. No rivalries were set up. No rivalries were paid off. There was nothing to it. So you're yeah. just sitting there waiting to get to a destination that you don't want to get to. Yeah. I, I mean, do you think they could have... I, for my money, they should have done Bianca. Done the back-to-back. And Yeah. And, sure. and that, that's what I would have done because I think that's a much better story than just having Ronda show up and win. Yeah. You can get to Ronda Flair without yeah. without I, doing the, her winning the Rumble. I think they said something like that. Like, I think that was one of my like fingers crossed predictions for the Rumble that like this time last year was like, well, you want to start crossing off a lot of like, you know, these special records and milestone mm-hmm. moments for the women's Royal Rumble. Yeah. You know, you'll you'll have somebody enter at number one and win it and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Why would why not do a back to back winner? Yeah. When you don't really have any better options. You're yeah. heading in that direction for WrestleMania anyway, and everyone likes Bianca. It would have been a much better feel good moment that way. Yeah. I don't know. It's a better story for her as well. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Like, if she was going to have that mania match with Becky as is, getting her with a, a double Rumble win is definitely a good way to go. Because if you want to do a back-to-back Rumble win with somebody, you have to have someone who's organically over. And Bianca's a really good choice for that. Because yeah. if you just do back-to-back Rumble wins on someone people don't like, all that's bad. Yeah. That's a bad time. And I, and I don't want to be that guy as well but she didn't get to have her rumble win in front of fans Mm -hmm. in 2021 because we were still in like the the thunderdome era so it would have been nice for her to be able to have Mm. that moment and again i and i don't want to be that fan that's like give her her moments but yeah I think she does deserve that that moment mm. and have that return. Yeah. Oh, have was, that win was not, not a fun time. And I agree with basically everything you said. Like, there's so much fun to be had in a rumble, and this was lacking basically all of it. Yeah, it's amazing, really, isn't yeah. it? Surprising. In at number five, with 17 points, four nominations, two of which were top level, Ric Flair and Andrade El oh Idolo versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal at Ric Flair's final match. Uh, yeah, <laughs> final uh, match. Oh, this for now. this match. Like, if there if there ever was a time to use this to describe a match, woof. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is the word to describe this match. Goodness yeah. me. 
this is I mean, watching Flair just standing on the outside, bleeding profusely. Like he has said in interviews as well, it's like I think I passed out for for yeah. much of the match. It's like, oh, I don't. This was a bad idea from the get go. Yeah, and it is. It's embarrassing to watch the match unfold. Yeah. And ish, no, no good. It's 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 so <laughs> tough because it's not like Ric Flair's had. An interesting last couple of years, you know, to that's say the least. A, that's from, a way to put it. From, yeah. a, from a public perception yes. standpoint yeah. as well. And it's not like you're having this big coming out party for this is going to be my retirement tour last match. Like, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, when everyone thought that like the Undertaker's match with Reigns was going to be his last one. It was at the very least like, <laughs> it was at the very least like. This is a big deal and everything. We we really care about The Undertaker and that. And however many other retirement matches and those type that, that you want to bring up. I just didn't have any of that feeling. Because I think there is a, a feeling from a certain large point of the wrestling audience. It's like, I really do just kind of wish that Ric Flair would shut up and go away at this point. You know, like, mm. I don't really care to see Ric Flair wrestling, wrestling, quote unquote, at however old he is now bleeding buckets mm -hmm. after having like nearly died a few years ago. So even if you didn't have whatever perception of him from the last few years, of dark side of the ring and whatnot, you still are watching this like, boy, I hope you sure he doesn't just keel over in this match. Having had very serious health issues in the last few years and yeah. everything. It's just Gen it's a not genuine something worry. I want to watch. It's a genuine concern. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't want to watch an like, an old man ha going through the steps in slow motion mm -hmm. because he wants to have another one on pay per view. Like, compare just, compare yeah. that to Steamboat. Mm, well, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, actually, I mean, on that note, I will note now because a lot of people might be expecting this: the three way from Hard Times Three did not make the top <laughs> ten. Darn! It did get points. Tyrus versus Trevor Murdoch versus Matt Cardona did get nearly like it was close to making it into the cup but it did not get enough uh, nominations um but flair and andrade uh with jay lethal and jeff jarrett did hey why it was not enough to unseat position at number four with 19 points across mm -hmm. five nominations two of which were top level bobby lashley versus a moss from wrestlemania backlash now let me tell you Moss's name came up a lot uh, in people's <laughs> nominations, but it was various different Amos mm, matches. So, he like, split his own vote. He did. Yeah. Amos literally split everyone's vote. Like, yeah. one person even voted for one of the handicap matches he had on Raw as like their worst match of the year. Like, it was him versus three dudes, and they were like worst match of the year. And I'm like, yeah. I I don't know. I think the the Bobby Lashley stuff was way worse. I'm gonna be real with you, Chief. I forgot this match. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there's an easy way to remember this because it happened mm. at WrestleMania. So it happened mm. then again yeah. at WrestleMania Backlash. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. If it happened there, more than likely, yeah. four yeah. weeks later, you got to watch it again. Because mm. they didn't do the MVP turn at Mania, did they? Bobby Lashley just won at Mania. And then a Moss won at Backlash. Oh, I don't the remember. No. Turn. I don't, we talked about our best show of the year thing yesterday. When you'll see this. And WrestleMania comes up in conversation, of course. Mm. And I said that there were some duds on this card. I'd forgotten that this was something that happened. Yeah. I remember the Backlash match because this was on my list of ones that I voted for. I do not have any memory of them wrestling at WrestleMania. There you go. Amos was already with MVP, so they did the turn on that TV. Was on, it was on Raw, right? Yeah, they did the turn on TV. Uh, and he won this one here by pinfall, no less. Fantastic. Yeah. You know... It, it's it's a difficult position. I'm sure he's a very nice man. Oh yeah, I'm sure probably. Amos is a swell dude. Mm. Amos versus Johnny Gargano also got points, but uh, not enough to get um, it into the into the top ten. Ah, uh, it's a Vince project that at the, at the time Vince was still there and everything, but you know, there's always some sort of value in the enormous guy in wrestling and everything if you can use him sparingly and whatnot. That's why I thought that even at his worst, there's always something to like the great Kali type, where it's like mm -hmm. he's so big that you can do something with him. He's just not. It's not good. No, it was actually he's not good at this. Yeah, I I thought his match with Braun, the one at Crown Jewel, was going to do you higher, even mm -hmm. if Braun did say it was the big five star 
flippy floppers bad mm-hmm. social media time that he had um a must for me is like i feel like he's wasting mvp's time but Pete yeah. and i like you know we reviewed the last episode of raw recently mm. and there was legit legit a tease on that show of reuniting mvp with bobby lashley Again. and Pete made the point it was like i just wouldn't mind if they just pretended that him and a moss never happened <laughs> like, <laughs> they just never reference it again i'd be like yeah i'd be fine with that yeah. and just like they just put the hurt business back together Thumbs up from me, yeah. Because I think Omos is dead weight to MVP, a waste of his talent. I think Omos was really good in his role with AJ Styles. Granted, yeah. they, they they ran that down into the ground, and occasionally it was like a bit too much. Too much of the focus was on Omos and not AJ Styles. But when they occasionally used him, like in the the um, was in TLC when you know he gets hit in the chair, uh, hit, hit in the chair, he gets hit in the back with a chair, and he just completely no sells it like looks around at who's him i'm like that's a fun spot that's fun i liked him at wrestlemania when he won the tag titles with aj i even liked that because he was protected quite well but when he's just like he's a big lad and he beats up people serious diminishing returns you do it like once in a match he and was that's in money it. in the bank this year wasn't he was he no no surely not maybe i think. feel like he was in money in the bank this surely year. surely not hold on right uh, God, next. it shows how much I remember about these shows. Next. <laughs> Goodness next. me. The more you, like, you saying that, it's kind of a mock in a, a bit of my brain. Yeah, there he is. Oh, it was God. Theory, True McIntyre, Madcap Moss, Amos, Riddle, Sami Zayn, Rollins, and Sheamus. He could have just reached up and grabbed it. Yeah, because so they did tall. a big table spot with him. So I think yeah. I did say uh, it was probably yeah. one of the funnest, ma- uh, funnest spots of the match. Yeah. Funnest is a word. Mm. In at number three with let me just double check my points here oh man this is quite the jump so bobby lashley and Amos got 19 points mm. in at number three with 50 points <laughs> <laughs> with 15 nominations four of which were top level ronda rousey versus shotzi blackheart <laughs> from survivor wondering, series wondering yeah. when it was going to come up yeah i thought maybe this is a bit of recency bias but it also like ronda herself has said yeah that was a that was a bad match mm. like I, I i that was a bad match and i feel bad about that match because i don't think it's just the the ddt spot on the apron like that doesn't help things because it's a huge botch it's ronda's like this i feel like by november that was like the peak of a lack of caring in 2022 she's got zero effort in this match and i really hated the finish mm. which is that Shotzi runs wild she does this dive off the apron on top of Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler takes them out that's the whole storyline is like can she do this on her own they get back in the ring and Ronda just wins yeah. it's like we didn't even get a near fall mm. off the spot like Ronda just like I'm up then and you're done yeah so what was the point <laughs> it, it was a bad build uh very last minute and it's a bad match. It's <laughs> real bad. Uh, but it's just, it, there was nothing to it. Uh, and it, it was bad for the SmackDown Women's Championship. If this was a plain old singles match on this show, no title involved, you can make more of an argument for it being not that bad because it's like, eh, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. This is for your top women's belt on SmackDown. And there's nothing to it. There's just no build. There's no stars involved in this. Because Ronda Rousey, Sorry, but your star power has been really diminished across 2022. People do not care about her anymore. It is staggering. If you watch side by side a match from 2022 and like Rousey's debut at Mm. WrestleMania 34. God, what match? The amount of energy, the effort, just the the physical charisma Mm -hmm. that she exudes in that match. When she squares up to Triple H. It's it's unbelievable. That's one of the best debut matches like in WWE history. Absolutely. And that and Taz. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same performer now she does not wrestle at all with the same level of energy that she had mm-hmm. then yeah and it's like again i go back to my comment about sasha banks it's just like this is what you've chosen to do all year and mm-hmm. she's the level of star where you can't really just change direction and not figure her into the big plans because yeah. she is such a name but and like Fox want her. Mm-hmm. Fox wants her on TV yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like this match, this match. Sucks. Yeah, it was it, it was, was no good. Bad. And we were saying in the podcast reviews leading up to this 
that if you wanted to do this match, that's fine, but give, give Shotzi a little bit more leading into the match mm -hmm. rather than just being another geek on the roster until literally like two weeks beforehand. Yeah, Ronda had already beaten. Yeah. Uh, be contrary, contrary to Shotzi saying yeah. like, she's never been in the ring never, with someone like me. She's never been in the ring with someone like me, except when she has. <laughs> she's never been in the ring with someone like me twice. Yeah. It just, I think, I think Shotzi's had a bad year at times mm -hmm. a lot. Like there were a lot of moments in the women's money in the bank match that were, kind of on her and she got a lot of flack for that on Twitter some rightly some wrongly but like this was just a combination that I don't think anybody's really looking forward to and then it I don't know if it uh it met the expectations that people had but it was uh not good mm. so that is that's three Rousey matches mm -hmm. in the top 10 yeah four if you include the rumble because she won sure. it mm -hmm. I think it's a big factor and I, like and I, and I, yeah, I, I think you might be right there. I think that is a factor in people's nominations. Mm. So we, we get kind of a bad year for Ronda Rousey. Oh yeah, yeah. What do you do with Rousey? Like you know, going into twenty twenty three, like if you're if you're ha sat down with Triple H, what do you do? Stop having a wrestle. <laughs> stop having her talk. <laughs> yeah, stop having a talk. Step one. God, because yeah. like I'd have Becky beat her at WrestleMania, and then yes. she's never seen that, it again. Why? Yes. Why, yeah, how we've not done Becky Ronda mm. because WWE were like, no, Ronda Charlotte's the match. Like that, you know, Becky was accidentally clearly, in, yeah, clearly the match. <laughs> the match they always wanted After to do. They did it this year. It was so great because they never wanted to do Ronda Becky. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do Ronda Charlotte, and then because Becky, like Becky, was the the Daniel Bryan, so mm -hmm. like, oh, well, we have to put her in, I guess. But I'm still happy by Charlotte Flair. So as the Batista in this role, mm -hmm. it's like it's a triple threat now. I I hope, yeah, maybe we will get Ronda Becky, but I feel like that fire's ma massively gone now. Yeah. Absolutely, like all, I don't care all, to see. I it. don't care to see it now. Like all the heat's gone from it. Yeah. So do you just do her in tag matches? You just do her and Baszler go with a tag run. I think sure. that's fine. I've been saying that they probably... I would have had them do that while Liv was champion. I would have kept mm -hmm. the belt on Liv Morgan and give her something to do and make Ronda and Shayna in the tag division because they put the tag belts on Aaliyah and Raquel. They clearly <laughs> don't care that much. And and Alexa and Asuka for six days. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. She just can't be the focal point of SmackDown like she is now. Like, all the top women's matches are built around ronda rousey and it's just this black hole of not caring vortex. it's yeah. a vortex that everything gets sucked into right now yeah i don't i mean she doesn't want to be there it doesn't seem like nah. just beat her and send her on her way here's my pitch here's my prediction mm. for 2023 this is not in the predictions video mm. it's ronda versus baszler at wrestlemania for the title fight pit Oh, that's closer to something I'm, sure. I'd look forward to. Yeah. I don't know, man, because then it's fake MMA. Yeah. And if there's one thing I really don't like in my wrestling, it's worked MMA. I don't like no worked MMA either. And I know neither of those those two are, you know, Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins levels of, of workers and everything. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. That sounds closer to something that I would enjoy watching than... And not. <laughs> Do you remember Daniel Cormier was the referee for that? Yeah, he, he sure was. was. <laughs> he was, was there. He was sure there. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. thought it was going to build to something. Yeah. I was there being like, that's the US title patch. It's, Daniel it's... Cormier versus Brock Lesnar all these years later. I thought it would do Cormier versus Rollins for the yeah. US title at a mm -hmm. Saudi show. I was like, that's got Saudi show written all over it. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. In at number two with 59 points, 14 nominations, nine of which were Ooh. top level. Which order are these? Yeah, which the order? End? It's Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee from Fair. WrestleMania 38. Okay. When the news started to come out, Dave Meltzer reported that Vince McMahon was working out for a match. Yeah. Ollie ran it as a, as a Wrestle Talk news. And I was like, I wouldn't run with that because like, it feels real like bottom of the barrel. Mm. It's pro it's, that's, that's not going to happen, though, is it? Yeah. Like, I know we'd had the Austin news and everything, but mm -hmm. I was like, no, Vince surely isn't having a match at WrestleMania. And he did. He, he did. sure did. He sure did. And he won mm. in a squash match against yeah. the guy. I mean, granted, a commentator, but that commentator who just beat supposedly one of your rising stars in Austin Theory not mm. 30 seconds beforehand. I still, to this day, was like staggered 
Like, I think back to how staggered I felt watching that because I was like, oh my God, Vince is wrestling a match. This is the craziest thing. 2022, what a year. Cody Rhodes has come back. Steve Austin's wrestled. Blah, 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 blah. And then the match goes on and it, you get real Brett Vince vibes. We were like, oh, I'm now just watching Vince McMahon working over Pat McAfee mm -hmm. really slowly mm -hmm. and really badly. Mm -hmm. And then he just wins. Mm -hmm. Kicks a football at him. Yeah. And I was like, this, what mindset do you have to go through to be like, yeah, I'm going to wrestle Pat McAfee. He's going to get no offensive moves in me because I can't take any. Which means, he, Iron Sheik at WrestleMania X7. Yep. Mm. The only reason he wins the Battle Royals, I can't take the bump. He yeah. wins by default. He wins by yeah. default. That is what happened here with Vince. Yeah, I... Okay. Looked like I, he melted. I, His body was <laughs> melting. I think, if you go back and watch our live reactions from WrestleMania, we are laughing a lot when we watch this match. And I think if you compare that to when we're watching something like Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn, we're laughing with that match. Yeah, huh? This we're laughing at this match. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It's so stupid. It did then lead to one of the funniest stunner cells I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so I don't know how it can be this high on the list. That's a post-match though. Yeah, yeah, it's post-match angles. It doesn't quite count. Um, but like, it's I, I think it's very close to being stupid fun sports entertainment. But it wasn't fun. I don't think. I do, it didn't quite hit the mark of what it needed to. Uh, maybe for, for big Vince fans out there, you know, maybe this did hit that mark, but I don't think it did for me. And surely this is it. Surely this is his last wrestling match, right? God, I effing hope so. <laughs> you say surely. Yeah. I mean, that's why, that's why I added surely mm, in there. Mm. If you'd have asked me four weeks ago, I'd be like, that's it. That's like, that's the final match, yeah. right? But then that Wall Street Journal article came out where he was like, no, I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I think in 2023, he's just going to take over again. And yeah. he will, he'll have another WrestleMania match. Mm. Against in Austin. This, <laughs> against Austin. Yeah. Go, going with what you were saying, I think that a lot of the times you can have a match that uh, leans into so bad it's funny mm. territory, so bad it's good territory. But I think this was a, a case where it's like, no, but it is still bad. And yeah. Like, you can laugh at it and everything, but your guilty pleasure movie will probably still win worst movie of the year for that year. And mm -hmm. also, like, you know, watching The Room. Room's a bad movie. Sure is. Yeah. You watch it with five of your friends, it's the funniest film in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. You watch it on your own, you're just watching a bad movie. Yeah. And like, I think our, you know, you both watch our live reaction to it. That's four people. That's five guys in a room. We've had a few beers. We're having a good time. We're having a laugh mm -hmm. and we're laughing at that match. I have not gone and watched the match on my own. And I don't think I want to. I don't want to. Because I don't know what the experience of watching this match just solo, just staring at a screen watching this is because it's not good. Like, you're right. Like, it's bad. Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's a, this was a bad, bad match. It was a bad decision. And I th I think it was the wrong call. Because I, if, like, ultimately, it does nothing for Austin Theory. No. And that was the whole point of this. Because then Austin comes out. Steve Austin, that is, not Theory. And he stunners Vince McMahon. The worst stunner cell. It, like, manages so to top yeah. Linda McMahon for oh, worst stunner cell. Which it's I, wonderful. And, and, you know, tops Donald Trump for worst stunner cells, which I didn't think was possible. Mm. And so you're like, okay, well, Steve Austin is better than Vince, who is better than Pat, who is better than Theory. Theory's the only wrestler here! Yeah. Mm. Now you've got a commentator and two old retired people. Yeah. Like, why is your active wrestler the worst of the four? Mm -hmm. Nostalgia's a hell of a drug, man. Sure is. Which means at number one. Yep. I think it comes as no surprise. Oh, yeah. We go from 59 points for Vince versus Pat to 85 <laughs> points. <laughs> 21 nominations, eight of which were top level. The Men's Royal Rumble. Never did I think, when we started this whole process a few years back, that a Royal Rumble would mm. win worst match of the year. Yeah. I got a message from Maggie from Fightful mm. that just says, I hate you for making me remember this match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's valid. And I, I apologized mm. to Maggie. I was like, in fairness, Maggie, I had to remember it too. Mm. I have, this is the most lackluster, mid-card, boring Royal Rumble 
There are two spots I can remember from this Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Perhaps three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bad Bunny taking the F5. Mm-hmm. That was good. Johnny Knoxville and AJ Styles. Yep, that was mm-hmm. not, not the Sami Zayn bits, mm-hmm. but the stuff with AJ when they just slap the crap out of each other. Yeah. And, and this is, it shows how much of it is. I can't quite remember. Either Mad Cat Moss or Happy Corbin eliminating AJ and all of us mm-hmm. going like, what the hell? Yeah. It was Mad Cat Moss. Mad Cat Moss, there you go. Like Mad mm-hmm. Cat Moss eliminating AJ being like, what the hell is this match? Yeah. What is going on here? Like, it, I'm not going to praise the 2015 Royal Rumble. Dude, it'd be hard pressed to. But <laughs> it's trying something. Yeah, that's true, actually. It is it, trying. It's not trying anything that works. It's got some star power to it. It's mm. got a bit of star power. It's got like a little Wyatt family half reunion, and then they fight. It's got the Dudley, like it's the got, Bubba Ray Dudley returns it's and got grabs some story. our story. It's got something to it. Like, it's awful and i don't like i think it's probably still the worst royal rumble ever but it's trying something (laughs) there's some sort of thought put into it this was a royal rumble match with not one ounce of thought put Mm -hmm. into it you had all of the things that were built up on tv like oh is ray mysterio or dominic mysterio gonna turn on the other eliminate the other is dominic gonna eliminate his dad not even in the match at the same time nope there's nothing to this match. Yeah. It is 45 minutes of you waiting for the last guy to come in there. Brock Lesnar comes in and then he wins in the shortest amount of time of any Royal Rumble winner. He broke that record. He wins in like two minutes from having entered. There, there's not a fun showdown at the end of him and Drew looking at each other from the WrestleMania deal and finally in front of all these people. Look at us back together again. Maybe, maybe sometime down the line nothing yeah it is the most uninspired royal rumble i've ever seen no thoughts rumble empty yeah is basically the, the, the <coughs> sum total of this it is the decision was brock lesnar is winning because we want to do brock and that's brock. it yeah. that's the whole match brock lesnar is winning what about the other no it doesn't matter brock lesnar's winning you just sit through 29 other people until brock lesnar comes out and wins that's the point of the match and nothing else in the match matters at all. And the Royal Rumble is one of the most versatile matches that you can have because there's so many stories that can be set up from it. Stories that can pay off at the Rumble, stories that can be set up during the Rumble, and teasers of things to come later during the Rumble. And there was nothing diddly dick in this whole match like, no. aside from Lesnar winning. That's it. There's no surprises. There's, there's no fun to the Rumble. Like, the no. Rumble's a fun time. Yeah. The but... only thing is Bad Bunny. That's yes. it. That's the yeah. only and, fun bit of the match. And Shane. Shane coming yeah. out doing his potato those punches. Are the, those are the two surprises. It's Shane McMahon and Bad Bunny. Yeah. Tell me who I'm supposed to get really in, in, excited to see. Mm. Like, Bad Bunny was kind of neat. Yeah. I, I wasn't looking forward to seeing Shane again. This match got nope. him fired. Yeah. It sure did. It sure did. Imagine <laughs> what this match could have been if Shane did all of his ideas. Well, it might have been best match of the year yeah, if, it might Shane, have been. if Shane had booked it. The, yeah, it was... It's an uninspiring rumble, and I think it actually takes an incredible amount of talent to book an uninspiring rumble. Yeah. Like that is that's a level above anything else Mm -hmm. to make a Royal Rumble boring. They literally did random number generator or random wrestler generator for 29 people and then said, and Brock Lesnar. Yeah. That's it. No, they did that, and then a couple of them were too close together that it might have been interesting. (laughs) They're like, no, 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 we gotta separate these ones. Those Mysterios can't be that close together. Those gotta go. Yeah, so no good. It was, uh, as according to our nominations, the worst match of the year. But why don't you let us know what your worst match of the year was in the comments down below. And hey, if this is your first time here and you've made it this far, please do press the subscribe button. Give us a little thumbs up and everything. It helps us in the algorithm and whatnot. And we will see you in a couple of days' time for the worst pay-per-views of 2022. I, I wonder been, if we'll talk oh, about the Royal I Rumble I wonder again. if the Rumble's going to make it. I have been Luke <laughs> Owen, DKT. That's been Jumper B. Quinnell. That's been Tempest. Jam that jam. <laughs>